Well, it's that time of the episode where we like to find out about G4 claims. Now, a lot of people listen to this show, they might have been involved in an accident and it's not their fault. Now, Nicole, if this has happened to folk, you know, the, the roads are busy just now, people are starting to go back to their work. There was a bad accident on M74 southbound the other day. What's your message to people that have been involved in a car accident and it's not their fault? Well, I'm glad you're asking, because guys, you'll not believe it again. Believe it or not, there is actually people listening to me on this show because someone else phoned me again last week from Football Daft to let me know that they've been involved in an accident. So if you're involved in an accident and it's not your fault, or if you're involved in any sort of accident, please contact G4 Claims. We can help you get back on the road safely so we can provide you with a like-for-like replacement car. If your car is written off, we can recover the pre-accident value for your car. If your car is repairable, we'll get it to one of our approved body shops or a body shop of your choice, whoever you want to use, if it's somebody in your family or whatever, you know, somebody you've got a long-standing relationship with, we can deal with them as well. So we will accommodate you with that. And with your insurance, they would tell you where to go, you tell us where to go. So we are at your bet and call. Everything we do for you is totally free of charge. We build everything to the at-fault insurance company. So my services are totally free. And if I can't help you for whatever reason, I'll point you in the right direction, I'll put you in your merry way, and I'll still make sure you're looked after. So, like I said, for the first time ever, unbelievably, there's people on this show who are actually listening to me. That doesn't happen very often. But people are listening, the people are phoning me, and I'm so, so happy. So thanks so, so much, everybody, for listening. And if you're involved in any sort of accident, Please contact G4 Claims. It's not a full claims. Made easy. Made easy. Made easy. There we go. Now let's welcome to Football Daft, a man who played in midfield for the likes of Falkirk, Dundee United and Aberdeen. Uh, before becoming manager at Air United, he's of course a champ man legend. He is Mark Kerr. Welcome to the show, Mark. Mark, welcome. And before we start, I think I just want to say I've never seen John. Well, I have seen him this happy when Lee Miller was on and John Hughes. And you're up there, mate. He's, oh. It's the most giddy we've seen him in it, boys. Well, yes, he's... It's cute, man. Uh, uh, do, you know, do you know what it's like? You know what it's like? Remember when you were at school and you fancied somebody? <laughs> That's what it's like, innit? <laughs> no, but see, in, all, in all honesty, Mark, see when you wear your, the Falker, you can wear your Falker club in my lifetime. You're definitely in that midfield. Look him, look him, look him. Look him going to town, It's as if he's about to start greeting. This is amazing. Here's John, man. I appreciate that, mate. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Hey, Mark, Mark, me, Grado and Chris are just going to go and we'll come back at the end of the interview, right? We'll just keep you with John now, right? If he's 20 minutes. <laughs> John, st- hey. John, stop recording. We'll give you 20 minutes. <laughs> Hey, Gredo, do you want to ask your customary question? Aye, mate. Up? So was your fan of the football when you were growing up, mate? I <laughs> <laughs> he's new one, mate. Ask everybody he's that now. Fan of the football? Did you like it, mate, when you were, when you were growing up? Did you follow the football? Aye, mate, that was me, really. Just, I was Cope Bridge, so we just fired out the front of the, the flats I stayed in. Uh-huh. That was us out there, but I was in, probably. I used to go to Celtic games when I, I didn't get into going to games until I was about 12 or 13, but then I would go to other games as well, you know what I mean, like round about, just go to sometimes the Rovers games and that, so I'd, I wasn't massive on getting to go to games and, and all that, it was more just playing the street and then sticking in really, um, but Aye. obviously along the way you're, you kind of don't take it that serious maybe for a for a short period, but most of the time my dad was amazing for us, he, he kept his into that and really, really Sometimes it's hard on you, but brilliant. He 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 looked after us a lot mm-hmm. with that kind of stuff. Mate, talking about like obviously what just happened, unfortunately, at Air. How did you find your first managerial experience? How was that going for a player playing for so many clubs and stuff, and then getting into management? How did you find it? I loved it. I loved the boys. I mean, I was, there was brilliant boys there, and last year we finished in the top four, which was the, we were meant to uh, kind of carry on and do because we got off to a good start being McCall that season. So. Uh, Brilliant experience, but we get cut short and never get the get, got to play the playoffs. And I think that would have, would have been a good experience for me to, to learn for. And then this year has been an absolute disaster, to be honest. Boys getting mm-hmm. changed in the terrace and 
I've not I've not managed in a, a dressing room this season. Um, boys don't get a breakfast, lunch. You get nothing really. You're just basically in shooting the boys off the terrace and setting up a session and going. So try to build a team spirit. Last year was fine. This year, I only had four players, so I, I built a full new squad. That is probably that's why it's hard to take because I know it's yeah. a right good strong squad that was getting built there. And the boy, I still think they've got a chance to get in the playoffs. Um, and hope he'll do well there. But ah, it was great. It was a lot of a lot of good stuff. Team, but the the this year has been hard. It has been hard for the the way animal football. Do you think that that's been a major Im- uh, like impact on it, Mark? The fact that you've not had that dressing room atmosphere, you've no the boys have not been able to really interact and stuff like that. You know each other. You know what I mean. So do you think that that's been a, a had a big impact on the fact that maybe you didn't get as much out of them as you, as you could have if you were in a normal and managing environment? Aye, definitely. But everybody was in the same boat. For me, it was probably just timing. Uh, the new owner came in and we were sitting fourth or fifth the full season um, and two weeks we dropped to ninth but because we had two games in hand. And the form wasn't great on that run, but that's the form of the championship, but it's magnified with the 27-game season. So as soon as you're down mm-hmm. there, the panic starts and social media and all that kind of stuff plays its part in... It is just down to timing. It was down to timing and I'm no better about it at all. It's, it's one of these things. Uh, David Smith came in, new owner, brilliant guy um, and I've no hard feelings. I'll still speak to David and I'll, I'll uh, obviously over my career or, or just in general but I've no hard feelings towards him. I think these things happen. I do think it was quite quick. We're only 15 games into a season but exactly. it's only a 27 game season. We were four points off playoffs sitting in ninth position, it's, which sounds mental, but it's just, everyone's been impacted with the short season, etc. you know what I mean? See, you're, you're talking about, obviously, you, you never really got long, and it was a bit, <coughs> uh, you know, unprecedented timing, should I say, but see, with the, the time that you did have with the players, you've played with loads of clubs, you've played with loads of great managers, was there any particular manager where you thought, I'm going to kind of base how I manage on this guy? Was there any that you went, you look, kind of took, you took the... I think I bet you, I bet you most there was probably in my career probably three or four that I, it didn't quite go well and they were in and out the, the club quite quickly um, but Ian McCord I didn't change anything for him with the team spirit and stuff like that mm. fair if I'm walking my way back um, he was brilliant the way he, he, he motivated boys and stuff I'm a different character for the guy uh, the gaffer was, was nuts at times but Aye. brilliant to work under <laughs> uh, a good man manager and then Husty at Falkirk was Husty didn't do much coaching anymore, but I knew him as a coach. So I liked to be Husty could talk to you, but didn't need to be in your face all the time and on the training ground. So there's been a lot. Uh, Craig Levine, I know Craig Levine gets a lot of kind of stick about his style of playing stuff, but Craig Levine was one of one of my best managers because he mm-hmm. he wanted you to pass the ball. I know people say he's negative and stuff. Wanted you to pass the ball, would encourage you to to have balls about you every time on a party mm. to, to go and do things. So I probably be bit um a lot of managers different stuff, but I, I did try to stay the same. I didn't try to turn into that aggressive hard man actor and like that. I just kind of I always tried to t- treat the boys well. And to be fair, sometimes I was probably too loyal to, to one or two boys at a time where mm. I probably needed to look after myself there when you knew you, the chips are down in probably Aye. my last three or four weeks, you know, I probably probably needed to just go put up. the thing was for me to go back in the team it was crying out for a bit of experience in the middle just to help mm-hmm. the boys in certain games and players were coming in and saying that to me and asking me that really? oh, like, honestly I because I was talking Aye. to the boys and they weren't Aye, doing probably. anybody else in they just it mm-hmm. was experienced players saying I think we just need that wee bit of experience in the middle and I maybe should have just went you know what I will go on um, mm-hmm. and I never I never done it but I, I didn't think that was right because I, I believed in the boys that were there and mm-hmm. um, but it was a wee bit of that. Maybe I, maybe I did stay loyal to certain certain players at certain times. But the boys hadn't done much wrong. Do you know what I mean? They hadn't mm. done much wrong. It was just the situation we were in. Uh, but as a manager, I just stayed stayed kind of true to myself. I didn't didn't change much Aye. as a person, you know. Basically, you come through at Falkirk, and there was uh, loads of players in that dressing room um, that were club legends, like like John said earlier on. Who was it that put their arm around you? And, you know, kind of took you under their wing. Who, what, what one of them was it that you would say, uh, he was he was kind of like my mentor kind of thing? Kevin McAllister was, uh, 
obviously probably Falkirk's biggest legend and crunching Scott Crabber, brought to me. Um, two guys that even got off the new contract. I was, I think I left school at 16. I played my first game and I was, my first year, I was only 17. But the two of them totally looked after me. They would give you a wee bit at times, but they, you could just tell they, they wanted you to do well. So they, they, I think they'd done my first deal for me at Falkirk. The, the guys actually they advised me on, I didn't ask for anything, obviously you just get your, I think it was, I think I was £140 or something YTS. And mm -hmm. you got like, I think it was at £250 my first contract was a week. Mm -hmm. um, but they'd done all that and said, so I'll get a wee appearance in there, Mark. And, and Alec Totten, the gaffer, was, was brilliant that way. But they guys, they, they 100% looked out for me for day one. And to be honest, I still speak to Crunchy. Um, he's a brilliant guy. But there was, Falk is an amazing club. See, we, see me were at Rockfall, John will know that. But the guys that were in that dressing room were amazing for, for younger boys coming through. Just proper good guys. Took you out in all the Christmas nights out. Took you, they involved you in everything, even though you were. You were a young boy, um, and on the part they were they were willing to willing to help you. They weren't just fine to keep their own place in the team. Mark, was that two thousand two? I mean, you know, you played in some great sides with Aberdeen, Dundee United, but as a Falkirk supporter, that two thousand and two, two thousand and three side under Ian McCall, when you had Yogi in there, had Kevin James, you had Owen Coyle, Lee, um, oh. you know, Taylor, Stuart Taylor. I mean, Davy Nichols. I mean, that was the season we beat, obviously, parts 4-0 in the Scottish Cup as well. I mean, was that one of the best sides you played in? Because certainly as a supporter watching that side, it's probably the best Falkirk side I've ever seen. Uh, they were a brilliant, that was a brilliant team. Um, so I see you only think of football because it's a short career, but you only kind of think short term. So you think, I'm thinking my team, they went to the playoff cup final. Mm. Um, we, like, Will Volks and yeah. Yeah. and Lee and all that again. Like, what an amazing group really tight group of boys um, and I was kind of the leader there so it was kind of flippy that 2002 I was a young boy kind of thing and I think I learned a lot in a couple of years but I was a brilliant team but it's probably how I learned how to look after young boys I think most of the time some I take a lot of pride in and most time boys speak about me on an interview or that they say oh Mark kind of looked after as a young boy and that's only because these guys done that with me and aye, aye. I never changed that as a manager I, I made sure I'd done that um, I wanted to do that and kind of look after these boys. And, uh, brilliant team, great players, um, lucky to play in that, that kind of team to win a league because you find out as you go on, you don't win. You don't win a lot in your career unless you play with Rangers or Celtic. So um, these, these, these teams are special when you're, when you're looking back in your career. You must have been gutted though. I mean, that was the season we obviously went on to win the league. Obviously, for as in usual folk at fa uh, fashion, we didn't get promotion even though we won the league, it was the last season at Brockville, you know, it was, I mean, it was just <coughs> a great season, but obviously sad at the end of it. I know, I think, I think we in a, I'd say, I'd agree to sign a new deal, because people think you just left, because I got a wee bit of pelters when I left as well, but we'd, we'd won the league, didn't go up because of the, the seating criteria. Um, but I'd already had a contract in place, and I said I would sign, I've been up, and we didn't, so I, I left, and, um, I was meant to go down to England, but I ended up going to Dundee United because Ian McCall was there and I was guaranteed to be kind of getting a chance of playing anyway. I obviously still had to do well, but it was, I was sad because we didn't get to... I believe that squad and that was good enough and Yogi and that was, was going to be his first season in charge as a manager going up. So uh, it was, it was a, that was quite a hard one for as a, as a young boy leaving there and trying to make the right decision as well at the same time. Mm. Well, I mean, that the United squad that they ended up playing alongside, they were a great team for years as well, weren't they? Aye, we had a, the first year, I think it was the first they'd been in the top six for. I think they were really struggling a year, and then Eddie Thompson had put a bit of money in. Uh, we had, McCall brought a lot of players in, spent a lot of money in, on good players, but we, we finished top end of the table, and then we made two cup finals the next year. Um, and McCall, I think my, McCall left, Midway through that, mm. then Chizzy mm. took over for a spell, so the team was still quite. And then it kind of had a wee dip with Craig Booster for about, I think it was six, seven months. Aye, that's right. That's aye, Craig Levine aye, came in and turned the full club around. That's aye. Craig, Craig so Levine came in and turned the full club around, so he did. And, and he went on to obviously Husty got the won the Scottish Cup, but we should have won the, won the League Cup with my pass back. To <laughs> <laughs> boy, they, big boy, they're upset. I'm like, oh no, but. 
Aye. Mate, well, I, don't, I don't. I wasn't going to mention that, mate. But uh, you've brought it up, so you want to talk us through what happened there, mate? <laughs> to be honest, it was. A, I, I was right up against Barry Ferguson. He's starting the background there, but he's class <laughs> player. What I mean, but I mean, uh, I, 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 I think we get through against Hibs two one. Um, the round of four, and I'm that's the best game I've ever been involved in. Then the cup final came, and we were. We were brilliant that day. We were excellent. Mm -hmm. We won. We won and won nothing. Uh, I remember Quella put big Christian back. He should have been two nothing because we should have got the penalty. But I don't know. You, I was, I was <laughs> sure. no, generally, I, I was strolling about that game, like getting loads of the ball, and I, I actually didn't mean to pass it back to the keeper. I went to pass it back to by Lee Wilkie, and he's as that time Streaky's just squeezing the lineup, so it goes by Streaky and Boyd. He's read it to the goalie but it was never for the goalie that, and the hardest right. bit for me is Eddie Thompson hadn't won a cup I'm, I'm glad that obviously he did the Scottish Cup after that but that's the biggest thing I, I always regret that and, and Dundee United fans have not got the best relationship with him now because of it but really? Seriously? I, I, Dundee United fans really held that name obviously I go to Aberdeen from them which is a wee bit of a rivalry um, but it does it, did, it, did, it does hurt you things with your I got on it. I just got on it. You're a young boy. You just got on it. Mate, the thing is, man, it's not like you've meant to do that. Oh, so how can the fans it's hold It's fucking Lee Wilkie's fault. Like <laughs> <laughs> fucking sneaky fucking off. Oh, man. He should have been there. Dafty. <laughs> man, then I'm, I'm sitting. Boys are greeting after the game and all that because we've lost. And I'm like, oh, fucking hell, this is me. It's caused this. Do you know what, you know what, Mark? Mark, you got your you got your own back. You ended up scoring. You ended up scoring the winner against them. Am I right? Aye, aye. I think I was before that. You I don't think I could ever make up for this, mate. I don't think I could ever make up. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, honestly, I'm just like, I, I know that's horrible, but just the thought of you just walking about seeing all these play, all these men greeting me, going, "Fuck, man, they're greeting because of me." <laughs> <laughs> You're right, mate. You're right. You know what I mean? I guess we, we went two one up again, and then we, we lost it. And I think we lost a goal. Like, Two minutes to go next. That's right. Then I made penalties. Well, after it, penalties. For a week, man. And then <laughs> the boy, there was about three boys scudded the ball over the bar and the penalty shoot and all. No, no, nothing's ever been mentioned. Just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but, mate, after that, you're saying you went to Aberdeen. Uh, what to Jimmy Calderwood at Aberdeen? Uh, we've, had a few, we've had a few stories about him in this show, haven't we, Jimmy Calderwood? Aye. Aye. So, how did you Aye. find him, mate, as a manager? I loved him, man. I, she's a player. I'm, I was straightforward. I just got in. I would just go in, just work flat out. So I never had a problem with any manager, like personally, um, until I was older, right enough. I had a couple, but um, <laughs> Jimmy, just, we'll get to that, mate. We'll get to that. Uh, Jimmy was brilliant. So he was with me, brought us in, uh, managed me perfectly. That was probably that my first year at Aberdeen was excellent. I was fans loved us and. We had a good season, I think we finished third or fourth that year. We had a really good season mm -hmm. and I loved it. Um, but things were going on behind the scenes that season. It was a bit strange. Obviously, I wasn't there. Yeah, I think it had been bubbling over for a, a couple of years before that, uh, with the Scottish Cup and the, the League Cup and that. There was always a thing about Aberdeen not getting by the semi-finals. So, mm -hmm. again, that kind of took its toll. But he was a brilliant guy. He liked to, he liked to laugh in that and easy going after only my only one thing with the after that, I, I get suspended and asked for the I had a christening and asked for the Monday off. <laughs> he said no. And I'd played some like 32 games in a row. And I thought he, he loves me anyway, he'll give me the Monday off. But he's like, no, you sent half last week. You're not getting the Monday off this week. You're playing the reserves. <laughs> like, Come on, man, you're kidding me on. He's like, no. But I ended up, I never went in the Monday. It's the only time I've ever done it. Yeah. I went to christening. And then he make it in, and he he dropped me, for at Parkhead. But he put in the paper that I was in the well. Oh, he's he likes doing that, doesn't he? he Got the paper when well. folk fucking. Jimmy it was Langfield Jamie Langfield on it. Jamie Langfield. He ended up. I I feel sorry for his his missus having oh, made that. Was, in, was that the Magdalene fence that made? Aye, aye. aye. <laughs> well, see, with me, he covered it up for me because he was just like, uh, yes. He's like, all right, you've not done anything wrong. You did ask for the Monday off, blah, blah, blah. But you're still not playing Saturday and you're not even in the squad, but I'll not stitch you up. So he put in that 
I took no well at the hotel. I still travelled with the team. It was just a punishment, but he, he kind of covered up, so I didn't get hammered. So he was brilliant. He looked Aye. after me. He did. I was, he was classy. He used to, he had to stay in the, I don't know if the boys have said this, he had to stay in the, the players' lounge till quarter past six after the game. So all the missus, all the family were up and he used to get the beer and the wine and all that and he'd get around and talk to everybody. He loved it. He That's absolutely good, loved that. it. Yeah, excellent. That sounds good, that. After the game and just give it a Good when you win. It's good when you're winning. How did you find, see when you were at Aberdeen, Mark, how did you find the the rivalry with Rangers? Was it right up your street when a Celtic man grown up? Ah, it was brought, ah, the games were class, aye. Aye, Oh, Any aye. game against see Celtic or Rangers, any game against them, the both teams are brilliant, but aye. there was a definite, the Rangers ones, and that team, the teams I've played in, done well against Rangers at uh, Patojic. I think aye, we, we turned them over a few times in Celtic, but there definitely was. There definitely was a needle there in the games. And the boys would talk. Ah, in fact, I got sent off. I got sent off in the, uh, one of the games. Um, I think it was easy diving. We easy diving as usual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember that. Do you I had about six stitches, my leg and all that. I got 25 minutes in when I called, it, didn't I? I got I, my leg. I've got it in my head, man. I've got it in my head. Who's on you? Uh, Lee McCulloch. Oh, it's not uh, like him, eh? Aye, uh, big Lee, man. And I came back... I say, I say tall, get in the back. It's not aye. like him, man. Aye, it's it's not like him. Remember, remember, <laughs> Selick had a midfielder called Kai Allen until he met fucking Lee McCulloch? <laughs> <laughs> right, Marky, obviously, we, you've, you'll have heard this a hundred million times, right? But when I talk to you about how good you were on Champ Manager, you are genuinely... One of the, the, the greatest players in champ Aye. manager history. It's, it's still all of the forums when you look at it. Up, everybody it always mentions Mark Kerr. Uh, so did you, you did, did you play the game yourself, Mark? Me another. I just left school. I used to my mates used to go mad for it in school, and then I left at sixteen, and then a year later, or a year and a, but I, I just was not I was at boxing or football. That's what I used to do, so I never played the game. I don't think I had a computer, actually. I don't think I had a computer at all, to be honest, man. Um, so I never played, but when I went to Aberdeen, we travelled a lot, we started to play it. Played it a bit yeah. then. It was good, I, I loved it when we were out. We'd done it for a couple of years there. Uh, did you see the main, difference when you played yourself? Part, I did, me. What's that? Did you see the difference in the team when you when you were picked? Did you see it happening? No, because I was up to date, man. I, would, I was near... Uh, oh, I've, right. never, I've never oh, right. played that uh, or seen my... Mafia, isn't it? Was it 2002 or something? Is it no 2001? Um, 2001, is it? Aye. I think it's 2001, I think. Aye. aye. Mate, you're absolute superstar, man. Like, aye. Messi. King, I mean, like, big time. I wish, big man. Time, I know. Like, AC Milan always used to sign you, man. I don't know what it was. Any game I signed it was, you. It was Man United. I used to sign him for Selig and then Man United would be sniffing about him. It was a nightmare. You couldn't keep him happy either. Big ego, Chris, you know what I mean? Aye, it's a Mark Eli. It's a Mark Eli. So Andy, <laughs> uh, you moved on and you went and played your football abroad for a wee while. Now I remember hearing some stories about what happened, so that you could finally get the permission for Pat to move overseas. Right. Tell well, us right. about it. Tell us about it. What happened? Got a big bag of money a on big, the table. A big, a big bag of cash, <laughs> my man. That <laughs> was <laughs> true, aye. Hey, that was mad over there, man. Honestly, it was brilliant. I, had, I went to a brilliant wee club outside Athens. Um, but I, I had the chance to go to England before I went to Aberdeen. I mean, never done, we never moved away when I was younger because he kind of pat. I never wanted to really gear up her job and stuff. And I was happy where I was go, where my career was progressing. But at that stage, I was 28. Um, and we just thought, let's do it. Let's go and, go and see what it's like. So it was excellent. Went over there and uh, that is true. They say, oh, we'll give you this and we'll give you that. And, to be fair, I, I actually get paid because a lot of boys go over there and get absolutely shafted. Um, mm-hmm. But, no, it was good, mate. I, I absolutely loved it. I would have stayed longer, but Pat started, she, she struggled after about a year. Um, and to be fair, she was flying home in like a... She'd fly home on like a Tuesday and then fly back over the next Friday and stuff like that. Um, it got to that stage. But she was loving it because the flights and all that were all paid and she used to go business class. So she used to go to Heathrow and then fly over and, Get a part like a prosecco, so that's probably quite enjoying it. You know what I mean? That's, 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 that's right up Grado Street. That that's one. that's here, honestly. That there's nothing better than a wee uh stove half in London, as you say, a wee bit of prosecco. 
That's what it's all about, especially a business class. I'd be writing about that. Aye. Writing about that. I'm no joking. You know what you know what they say, but happy, happy life, happy life, mate, isn't it? Exactly. Aye. Exactly. So <laughs> we're going we'll talk about your return to Falkirk. Right. Now John has been on at me since I says, Do you know what? I'm gonna try and get Marky on the show. He says brilliant because I want to know what happened with Paul Hartley. We kinda of alluded to it a wee bit. Um he didn't give away too much, but there was talk was talking, I'm getting almost pulled over the fucking table anyway, so what happened? And known a good and known a good way. No, definitely not, man. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, that was the two things that happened to me. I went to Queens um with Jim McIntyre to get back playing, so I'd done my cruise ship and that was uh, uh, that was the only time I've ever had a bad injury. So I went to Queens. And it was an issue after the game, but people felt upstairs were getting involved, filling gaps. So guys that were selling hospitality and all that ended up becoming down and being like assistant manager at Queen's. And I'd never had a, an argument, but I ended up walked to Queen's two days before the January window and people thought it was to get back to Falkirk. And I'd manufactured it, but it wasn't. I just did it enough and I says, I lost the plot and said to the guy, you know what, you can go and take an F and go and tell the chairman and if you want to wrap up my contract, wrap it up, you should be back selling your hospitality and showing people their seats. So I'd lost the plot at Queen's for one day and one day after the game. But I actually carried on to the Monday. Thinking it probably I'll get brushed under the carpet. But uh, it didn't. And I, I said, I get carried on. I just said, no, that, just do what I said on Saturday. And I left. And luckily enough, I ended up at Falkirk. But I actually still speak to that guy at Queen's that day. I was out of order. It's a heat of the moment after a game. Um, and that's how I ended up back at Falkirk. So Falkirk was brilliant. Obviously successful with Husty for three years. Amazing group of boys. That, that, then, Hibs, play, that Hibs playoff game, Mark, was just oh, just unbelievable. Are you all right, John? Put it away, John. Oh. John boys, <laughs> like, boys like Bob McHugh, like squad players, used to come on and score. For that, that team, like 92 minutes, and on the clock, he'd come on and score a goal to make us can I think we beat Rangers and Hibson in the last minute goal. So it was a good group of boys and that was the kind of atmosphere we had in our dressing room and then Paul Hartley came in. Obviously the, the most experienced one is me. Um, so I'm a target. And I was his captain. So he used to ask me questions. And me being me, I, I gave a straight answer, an honest one. And I could start him to see him pulling away for it. You know, like you weren't going in as a captain on a Thursday to ask you the questions and just one thing happened, a young boy, he chucked a young boy in. Yeah, we're not going too long. And the boy... No, mate, you oh, this is me too. Oh, this is great, I love this. A hey, hey boy, young uh, Kieran Dunn, great boy. He's actually um, Sunderland now. Kieran came on, set up a goal, done brilliant. Started the next week, done really well. See, by the third week, his young boys always take a dip. So Kieran took a massive dip in training. He was looking very nervous and all that. And the, the manager said to me, I'm going to play Kieran again for the start. And I said, Gaffey, he's struggling a wee bit. He's like, what do you mean he's struggling? I said, I can, he's, he's like starting to feel the pressure off of the boys now because he's starting. Players are on the, you don't get that wee bit of leeway. Boys are on you. They demand more. And he wasn't handling it. So we started the game. Young boys missed three or four chances. And then gives away a penalty. And then he hooks them off at half time. And I'm like, I fucking try to look after I was trying to look after I was genuinely trying to look after Paul Hartley by saying it I was just, I was just being honest and uh, for the end mate I just think he, it turned as if I was, I'd done something wrong it, it was after me I caused that you know rather than, than take a positive of it that he can trust mm. me and I'll yeah. give him honest answers but for the end mate he obviously his own ideas not everybody does at the time I was raging I, I was I caught my one under the sun to his face um, in his room and I absolutely hammered him Shockingly, Hamilton probably. Uh, oh, and it, it was like, you're leaving, and this is happening, that's happening. And I was just swearing, obviously, saying, uh, No, it's, that's not. I said, I, I wasn't saying that. I, wouldn't, I won't swear, but I was saying, I won't effing, don't effing contact me over the next day. I'll be back in here training on Monday, and I'll effing decide when I leave this club and when I don't, and blah, blah, blah. Cause I still had a contract. Um, mm-hmm. And I did, that's what I done. But see, the thing is, I went back in on Monday and trained. As hard as ever, didn't cause my problem. Didn't cause one problem. Um, 
and then I left with two, two or three days to go in the windy because I wasn't in squads and stuff like that. But it was wasn't it wasn't it done properly. It wasn't it done honestly and open up front with Paul Hartley and I'm no slaggy guy because it's not easy being a manager. But at that time, we get made out to be two older guys that were trying to, that weren't happy with he was trying to do at the club. Um, and that wasn't the case. Not a you were right, Mark. You were absolutely right because I mean. I think Paul, I'll say it for you, Paul Hartley's a fanny, right? But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but like, I mean, the, the, Houston, Houston obviously I thought was really hard done by, left the club, and then he's brought in, you know, that boys from, got, like, I don't know how good they were in training, Mark, but you see these, you saw these boys in the park, and they've come from all over England, all these players that have all just, we signed about 12 players and it just didn't gel, it didn't work and I don't know how good they were in training but it was just like, what is happening here? And then yeah, when guess, we went, uh, I was like... See, see that, but I, I didn't catch the, see the rebuilding of the squad? I didn't catch that, I wasn't there, so I didn't see how good they were in training or not. Um, but it was just, it was just putting players from all over the place. Like it was, it was generally just that was what was happening. It, when we were there, it was just it was just the way he treated people. Not people were like it didn't matter who came in, came and went. He changed things. Just the it generally was just to be awkward to the boys, um, and that that wasn't great. Well, he's he's been on and he's managing at Cove because that's his missus dad that kind of owns him, um, and he's he's won titles in League Two and League One with Alan, so he's, he's done a bit in in the game, and I wouldn't slag that, but. He just didn't treat us properly and he didn't go on to have a good good one. And that's one thing I can say that I've not done it here. I've left a right good squad and hope he'll get the benefit out of that. That was going to be my next question, actually, Mark. Do you think that <coughs> with, with uh, Lee and Cracks in there, do you think you could maybe go in there in a coaching role or something until, you, until another management role actually comes up? No, I'd love to get in there. I'd get in there for nothing, to be honest. Um, mm. Chrissy, I would. And, but Lee and Cracks have got their thing going now and and I would never, I speak to the boys all the time, text them, as I've always done, uh, all the best, but I would never try to angle my way in there, because I know what it's like, you get people on the board, you get other people about the place that, that I've got brilliant relationships with, so they try to force the issue, but if that mm. was the happen, it'd be down to laying cracks, um, and I would never, I would never push in um, like that, because the boys are doing their job, and you know, it's like, I could get in it, I end up getting credit for something that they've done, so, it's not, it's, the time is not great. Um, if anything was to happen with that, I would do it. I would openly do anything like that, um, especially with people that you trust and you can work alongside. But um, time is not right. I don't I don't think the boys need anybody. To be honest, I think they're doing a great job. And I, I definitely think they'll win the league. I definitely think they'll win the league. I don't think MD will, will catch them. So I'm delighted with that and I hope everybody sticks with them. Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, John's like, yes, Matt. Yes, yes Matt. Come on, yes, Matt. <laughs> Come on, you bells. Matt, Matt, this, is, this has been absolutely brilliant, mate. But we've come, to the point, we've come to the point in the interview where we, we have a wee quiz. We like to do a wee quiz, a Scottish football quiz. Oh, we are murder. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Listen, as long as you get more than three, then you won't be at the bottom. Cracks, cracks get one, and we got him back on the show to do it again so that he didn't just have one. Right. Right. So, right, yeah, so, I get my here, man. right. So, great, Gredo, <laughs> you want to ask you questions? Aye, so we're we around doing what the, the scores are recently. Aye. Yeah. Aye. So, so, we've got last week, David Martindale went top of the leaderboard with a score of 16. Right. What? Uh, How many questions is there? <laughs> as many as you and, can answer 90 uh, seconds oh, exactly right, right, right. in joint second it's John Sutton and Chuck Young with 15 then we've got Mark Wilson and Keith Lasley tucked in just behind them with 14 other selected scores include Kenny Joker on 13 Jamie Langfield on 12 Lee Miller on 6 and at the bottom it's a tie between Peter Lovenkranz Derek Johnston Craig Levine and Mixu Patalina and they're on 3 is there anybody you want to beat on there? Barry for yeah. East Enders on 4 as well <laughs> <laughs> Every week you say <laughs> well, I think that should be in there Don't forget about Barry Anybody man to go off the bottom I'm, I'm <laughs> here, man. Right but so you, you can't, can't pass. pass You can't pass right, right. But in saying that you can just say any answer See if you don't know the answer Just say anything 
Owen, can I just say before we go here, just to be fair, I know he's a legend at Falkirk and you love him. It's 90 seconds, John. No, okay. 120. Okay. Right? Right. Don't worry, Don't Mark, I've got it. your back. Ready? <clears throat> right, ready, Grado. Right. And start. Who was Scotland manager during the 2004 Euro qualification campaign? Betty Volts. What nationality is Rangers midfielder Yanis Hadji? Romani. Which side did Celtic sign Ryan Christie from? Inverness. In what year did you make your debut at Falkirk? 99. The Dandies is a nickname for which SBFL team? Aberdeen. Chris Erskine, Stephen Saunders and Paul Payton all play for which Lowland League side? East Kilbride. Which midfielder pulled out of the Scotland squad this week? Scott Bride. How many goals did you score for Dundee United? Four. Name one of Brora Rangers scorers against Hearts. Mark Kerr. Jobby is the nickname of what League One manager? <laughs> Ian Murray, don't know that one. Which club did Rangers buy Glenn Kamara from? Dundee. Who is the current Aberdeen captain? Ferguson. What is Asterias Tripolis home ground called? <laughs> Oh, I don't know that one. Jesus, man. Thomas, <laughs> 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 Which Japan-based tournament did Scotland win in 2006? Time. That's solid, John. Oh, yeah. Let him answer it. Let him answer it. I don't know. Carrying Cup or something like that. Hey, oh, all right, Kelly. Oh, oh, you, oh, oh. Fucking... you sure you don't want to crack it? Answer that. I stare at Tripolis home ground. <laughs> Answer. How do you pronounce it? Why are you fucking putting that in, John? I like it. That's how you played for them. Mark, you played for them. Mark, come on, try to see it, but but try to see it. How do you? Honestly, mate, I stayed about five hundred yards from the ground too. I don't. I don't even know how to do it. Honestly. Right, Mark, let's go through your wrong answers. You're off to a fire. You got the first six right. Mm -hmm. um, then you started tripping up a wee bit. Uh, it was Ryan Jack that pulled out the Scotland squad. I've got down you scored five goals for Dundee United. I see the thing is on the Wikipedia. It says two or something, but... I scored, You've I got know. to take it for the horse's mouth. I'll, I'll you see. Uh, Mark gets don't don't that's it you've got it right Mark you're, you're absolutely right that takes your score up uh, right uh, broader Rangers it was I it was Jordan McRae or Martin McQueen that uh, scored against Hearts I can't believe you didn't get this one Ian McCall his nickname was Jobby at Falkirk do you know why I never knew that I apparently the, 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 the office or something. No, he took a shot at a shit in Simon Stainrod's shoe, and that's why he got oh, pinned at the club, right. apparently. We've got a song for him. He's just off his song, he's done it. I wasn't sure. Aye, aye. Yeah, the, the song Sing goes, a song, John. The song, he's white, he's blue, he shot in Simon's shoe, Ian McCall, <laughs> Ian McCall. He's white, he's blue, he's blue. he shot in Simon's shoe, Ian McCall. <laughs> There you go. Um, and then the Astraeus Tripolis Stadium is called the Theodorus Cockhawk Tronis Stadium. But you can't I even know. pronounce What's it. What's it called, John? John, what's it called? The Theodorus Cockhawk Tronis Stadium. There you go. There that's you. A, that's, that's, it's named after the big striker, remember? That's it. And the, <laughs> <laughs> the Kirin Cup was right. You've done yourself proud. You've done Falkirk proud, Mark. Ten points. Oh, wait, man. Oh, man. He's, he's got a feeling in his eye. You've done not just yourself proud. You've done Falkirk proud, Mark. There you go.